y'all been rocking with me, man. Y'all really have been rocking with me. Y'all really have been rocking with me. Um, this is probably one of my better mornings. I look like something. You know what I'm saying? I ain't looking like Uchi Gawaza. Because this morning I'm taking y'all on with me on the tour to visit a school. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably saying, Ty, you just went to school. Today I'm going to fill you guys on everything me and my hair career. Okay, because you guys have been asking and I'm going to deliver today. So, I was in enrolled in a Veda Institute in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, um, I mentioned before previously why I withdrew from the program. Um, I withdrew from the program because I came up, my time was up. And when your time is up with Aveda, any extra time that you have remaining after the ending of your contract, you're responsible for paying her hour until you complete whatever it is that you signed up for. I, I had initially signed up for the 1500 hour program at the end of my contract date, which was June the 29th. I had only reached um, 1200 hours. So I still owed 300 hours and I wasn't gonna pay $12 an hour outside of what the VA had already paid Aveda, okay? To me, that was kind of um, double dipping and I wasn't having it, okay? The thing about it in Texas, you're only required to have a thousand hours. So even though I didn't complete the 1500 hour program, I did complete enough to get licensed in Texas. I took my written exam, I passed it. So now I'm just waiting on my practical. Now been following me for a while you know that I recently traveled home for the month of July to just try to figure some things out so now I have to look at my options because yes I have been to cosmetology school but I get paid for going to school okay the thing of it is if I were to take my license if I were to take my practical in Texas I could become licensed in Texas before me, in order for me to receive reciprocity, which is a transfer and licensing here in the District of Columbia, I would have to be practicing in Texas for six months. Well, I'm not gonna be in Texas for six more months. So a lot of people might say, oh my God, it was in void, it was in vain. It wasn't, it wasn't. I enjoyed my experience, I learned a lot. But it, I, it looks like I might be going through cosmetology school all over again, just in a different state. I think um, I will be returning to Texas, okay, at the end of the month. Um, I'm debating if I'm going to go and take my practical because I have so much going on. I think that I am. I think that I'm going to go ahead and go um, take my practical, get the licenses up under my belt because life happens, right? And if I come back to Texas with my son being there, if I still want to work, I should be able to do that. I earned it. But um, it won't, I can't transfer. So basically I will have to go through a cosmetology program here in the city, which I'm completely okay with, okay? It's not a bad thing because I get paid for going to school and my funding for me being a military veteran is going to pay for that schooling. So I'm super excited about that, okay? So I'm gonna take you guys with me on this journey today, all right? Let's get into Taj Jewel of the Day because I did say I want to go back to doing those no matter, uh, um, I'm sorry, I forgot what I was saying. But I did tell y'all I was going to start back doing Taj Jewel of the Day in all of my vlogs. Um, if this is your first time here, welcome home because I just started like babbling. Welcome home, Angel. Welcome home to Touch My Tie Hair Co. This is your home. I'm happy you're here. And if, you, if you're returning, I'm happy you came back. I miss you, girl. Hey, girl. We hold no child, you know, we've been through some things, girl, but we still go, we still go. Woo, if you one of my subscribers, baby, you done been through it with me. Tears, stress, strife, and baby, I'm still, I'm still crying. Thank God I don't look like what I've been through. Amen. God is always worthy to be praised. It doesn't matter how you feel. Get it together. Okay, get it together. I have to tell myself that all the time. Get it together, girl. <sighs> it's time for... Taz Jewel of the Day! Taz Jewel of the Day is what we need to hear. Y'all, 
Let go of what you can't change. Let it go. If it doesn't benefit you, if it's not food to your soul, you let go. Let go. Let me tell you something. Stop being stingy with you. It took me to come home to remember exactly who I was because I was lost. It's not that I didn't love myself. It's not that I didn't know who I was, but me, like Takia, the the goofy Takia, the, the people, I, I just, I thank God that he didn't let my demons win because y'all, I have been growing through some Okay, like I thank God that I'm here, type of shit. You read it between the lines if you want to. It got that dark for me, that bad, and I ain't ashamed to say it. I promised myself to keep going, and even in this transition, y'all, things have not been easy for me. Finding a place to stay figuring it out still gotta put my oldest son in the military still gotta travel how i'm gonna do this traveling back and forth to texas for my baby to support him but i know that i serve a, a god that can do all things and i ain't perfect i'm just different so we gonna work it out purpose is purpose being alone is important. It's lonely. I've spent a lot of time alone. But I figured me out in that time. And I know what I will and will not deal with. Boundaries. Let go of what you can't change. It's all right. It's going to be what it's going to be. Keep going. All right. Let's get into today. Let's see what today has for us. Come on. I'm so happy you came back. Let's All go. right, so a serious point to ponder here. Um, the fact that my check engine light just came on, but um, this traffic is ridiculous. So if I'm going to be going to this school, I will be taking the beltway to get here. And y'all, it is bumper to bumper traffic. I'm actually late for my tour appointment because of traffic. So, this is something for me to indeed consider. Hmm. I don't know about this. We'll see, though. All right, angels. As you guys can see, I am just leaving Paul Mitchell to school. Tyson's Corner, okay? Um, they have an Aveda store in here, y'all. Look, right next to the Paul Mitchell. They tried it. <laughs> but I'm just leaving. Um, let's get into, I want to talk about the tour, okay? And then I'm going to get into the good, the bad, and the ugly with Aveda. Let's talk about it today. Cause I know y'all been waiting, so let's do it. <laughs> Look who I'm with y'all, my favorite person. <laughs> let's eat, baby. Okay, so I needed to do this little piece for a clip. So, um, the past two days I've been visiting cosmetology schools. You saw, you should have just seen where I visited uh, Paul Mitchell in Tyson's Corner. This next clip is me visiting um, Bennett Career Institute here in Washington, D.C. Um, it is a black owned business and it was a primary choice for me 
being as though it was um, an African-American based school based on African-American culture and aesthetics. Um, however, they do not accept the Montgomery, they do not accept uh, VA benefits or funding at all. Um, and it sucked because I would have picked, this would have been the school that I picked. Um, so here are some artifacts that they have in the school that I thought was really, really dope. Um, so yeah, check that out. It's right here. Next clip. Yeah, look, they exhibiting the uh, first. This is how you know this is an African American artifacts school. I'm proud to see this in a beauty school, like the original hot stove. The original Marcel's. Wow, look at this. Like, this is so dope. Look at that blow dryer. Look at the razors, the clippers. This is so dope. If you're wondering where I am, I am at the Bennett Career Institute located in Washington, D.C. They have an awards case. Things that they have won. Yes, it is me. I'm just admiring. Okay, angels, welcome back to Touch My Tie Hair Couple. Y'all know um, I come to y'all real raw and cut. Okay, I got my old wig braids in, okay, with my wig cap. It's hot, okay? I'm at my great-grandmother's house, and it's hot up in here, okay? They don't have no AC. You know how I be at grandma house, okay? They be cold all year long. They don't, you know, they don't, they don't do AC, so. I'm actually coming to you from our back porch area, um, off of our house. So we got like an inside deck. So I'm coming to you from there. I want to finish this series, okay? This um, series of my Aveda experience, okay? Um, if you're tuning in, then you hit this video because you wanna know how I feel about the cosmetology school that I did attend, um, Aveda Institute in San Antonio, Texas for the 1500 cosm for the 1500 hour cosmetology program um i did fulfill the requirement of a thousand hours for texas at my time of withdrawal i have completed 1220 hours um and however i didn't fulfill the 1500 hour program okay so this is why i did why i did let's start number one why I didn't complete the program. What you have to understand before attending cosmetology school is that it is a year of your life. It is a year of time that you are taking to invest in yourself. Most programs last for about a year. Hold on, let me turn the TV down. Most programs last for um, about a year. Okay, most programs last for about 10 to 12 months. Um, and you have a certain amount of hours that you have to complete. I hope this fan is not too loud and you guys can hear me. You have a certain amount of hours that you have to complete in order to fulfill the state requirement. So in the state of Texas, you are required to complete a thousand hours. I enrolled in the 1500 hour program because at the time of my tour they told me that they offered a taping class an eyelash class um and so i wanted to i wanted to be a part of that and receive that curriculum as well so i enrolled okay things to know before enrolling into a school it's going to take you about a year to complete okay that's number one number two your funding your funding matters um i'm gonna be honest with you from my experience, take what is required by the state. Because beyond that, um, you don't need it. Experience is what you need, okay? 
if you're watching this and you're in the Texas area, specifically San Antonio, Texas, you do not need to do the $1,500 program. I'm going to say that one more time. Don't waste your money, okay? You do not need to do the $1,500 program. Take the $1,000 program. It's going to give you everything that you need. Get your license. Become whatever it is that you want to become, okay? Um, I do regret wasting my time because the tape-ins, I already do those. If you know me, I already do extensions. I already know how to do those. The lashes, you don't get a certification. They just let you dibble and dabble for a day, okay? You don't get certified. It's bull crap. Don't do it. Don't do the $1,500 program. Take the 1,000 hours, get what you need to get, pass state board, any outside training that you want beyond that, invest in yourself and in your brand and pay for it, period. Because, no, okay? Um, so, 1,000 hours versus 1,500 hours, take the 1,000 hour program. Um, Aveda. Okay, curriculum. Aveda has an amazing curriculum, okay? The school, the, specifically the school that I attended, I could not ask for a better group of educational leaders than what I had. I loved my school educators, all of them. Every last one of them were amazing, even down to our reception staff, um, our administration staff. Like, Aveda in San Antonio is a great school to go to. It is amazing. And I would recommend this school to anybody, okay? Now, what you have to understand is that it is a business and that those people are there to make money for Aveda. The moment that you get that misconstrued and you think that people are your friends, you're going to be upset. It's a business. They're there to make money, meet quotas. Okay? It's business. So everything is done from a business aspect. Um, you have to know and understand that you can't take everything personal. And there are rules and there, there are regulations and Unfortunately, what I learned at, as I went on in my time at Aveda is that the school could change the rules whenever they want to, okay? So you might come into the school and they might have a late policy. School starts at 9.30. They might have a late policy in place, which this did happen while I was there. They allowed you to get to be tardy three times per phase. Tardy was any time between 9 and 9.30. Excuse me. Tardy was any time between 9 and 9.30. School started at 9, so you're required to be there prior to 9 to be on time. Any time between 9 and 9.30, you were considered late. Okay? And they allowed you three of those per phase. After your third one, you would be sent home after 9.30. Or if you arrived to school after 9.30, you couldn't come in. That was a great policy. People who were mothers, um, accidents, traffic, things like that. It happens for people. Well, towards the end of my time at the school, they took that policy away. And a lot of the students were frustrated about it because they had been attending the school for six, seven, eight, nine months and used to this policy. And now all of a sudden, you guys take it away. So you have to be... Um, you have to be able to um, adhere to all these policy changes, okay? Um, so I talked about, what did I talk about so far? I'm lost, y'all. I should have made a list about this. And I'm probably going to redo some things if I missed it. So this is going to be a part one. Um, but keeping on with what is on my mind. Um, let's go right into rules and regulations like i said the school is subject to change their rules and regulations at any time um and you just gotta follow suit with that and it does suck it does suck um but it's, it's what you signed up for 
So you always have to be in compliance with the regulations that the school has. And it can suck because they can change without even notifying you, you know? So just be ready for that. It takes time. Um, what else? Okay, attendance. Come to school every day. If you miss school, make it up immediately. With me and my situation, I was in school, um, but I also was starting my business. And that was how I made my money, my business. When you're in cosmetology school, you don't get paid, you get tips, all right? So I needed to get paid, right? So in the state of Texas, you do not have to be licensed to do wigs and weaves. I'm sorry, you do not have to be licensed to do wigs. So I had opened up a wig boutique in San Antonio and I was, I opened up a shop and um, I did wigs and natural hair in the shop and I was busy, I was booked. So I did not make up my days, you know what I'm saying? And that's something that I regret because I really could have finished the program on time, completing the 1500 hours had I made up my days and then I wouldn't be in the predicament that I'm in now. I'm gonna get into that, but nonetheless, go to school. Life happens. You gotta think you, you're taking a year of your time to dedicate to you, right? To something that you want to do. You know how much can happen in a year? A lot, right? So make sure you check out your school attendance policies. Make sure you know and understand Make sure you understand the leave of absence policies. Make sure you understand all those things. Ask questions. When you're taking these school tours and before you sign that contract, that is your time to ask. Which brings me into the next thing. Read your contract. Starting cosmetology school is a very, very exciting time you're new it's something you want to do you get in there you're seeing the students you're like oh yeah you're about to get your kid you're excited yes 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 i'm about to start once you start that program once you clock in that first your first initial clock in you are in agreement with that contract and if you have not read it you are going to be sad sam sausage head you understand what i'm saying read that contract understand what the withdrawal policies are understand what the refund policies are understand that contract when they sit you in that room because they're going to sit you in a room and you come in you sign your contract this is going to be before you start school and they're going to ask you do you have any questions don't say no ask the questions they might be uncomfortable questions to ask but please ask them ask the questions if you don't know or you don't understand something in your contract please ask i had so many of my classmates that did not read their contract they did not know when their contract ended they did not know um what they could and could not do in reference to withdrawing read it's all right there they're gonna put it right there some of it's gonna be in the tiny tiny print but make sure you take the time out to read it, okay? Um, and understand whatever funding you're using, what their rules are as well, okay? For example, I use the Montgomery, I use my GI Bill, not Montgomery, but my post 9-11, okay? So post 9-11 paid for my schooling. I enrolled in school June of 2021. <laughs> My contract was drafted for June 29th of 2022 for me to com finish the program, completing 1500 hours. Here we are in July, right? So last month, June 29th, when I first started school, my school was paid for, I started school June, July, my school was paid for in totality. In the state of Texas, the 1500 program, it was somewhere around $22,000. Somewhere around there, right? So VA cut the check for me. So what I had to realize is that at that time, my debt to the school had been paid. So if I was to drop out for any reason or withdraw, I would have been in debt to the VA. 
You see what I'm saying? So I continued on. My requirement with the VA was to fulfill that contract until June 29th. I stayed in school till June 29th. On June, the, I think it was June maybe 31st, June 30th, I sent an email to the school withdrawing from the program because I had fulfilled my requirement with the VA. The VA had already paid for my school, so I'm not in debt to a beta. Am I making sense? So make sure that you know what your withdrawal requirements are with your funding, whether that's um, financial aid, whether you're taking out a student loan, you know, I, I don't know. People use different forms um, and ways to pay for school. So just make sure you understand those contracts, those things that you're signing, what your obligations are to your financial institution as well as your school. Um, if you have questions about the GI Bill and you don't know, maybe I can help you, you know, drop a comment. I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can. Um, I wasn't in debt or owe the school anything. They released my hours. So in Texas, the schools release your hours at the end of each month to the Texas Department of Regulation. And so my last release was at the end of June when I went on to TDRL, um, I seen that my hours were at like 1225 or something like that. So I'm well over the threshold that I need to be to go in and take my practical. I took my written at my thousand at my 900 hour mark. So in the state of Texas, you can go and you can take your written exam at 900 hours. I took my written at 900 hours um, and I passed it. So now I'm just awaiting to take my practical. I hope this is making sense, okay? Um, moving right along. What did I talk about? I talked about attendance. I talked about rules and regulations. Um, okay, so school, all right? School is not a place for you to make friends. The instructors don't have to like you. They're there to do a job. They're there to teach you, to ensure that you get what you paid for. They're not there to be your friends. Now, with that being said, you're gonna meet some cool instructors. You're gonna meet some classmates that you do click with and that you do become cool with. You do what you do, right? My recommendation for that is keep it business. Keep it short, keep it sweet. Because that way you don't get yourself hurt. You can enjoy your atmosphere while you are at school, but the moment that you trying to get somebody to like you and become friendly, you start to lose focus. You know what I'm saying? You got to think you're with you're around these men and women for a year of your life. So that's a long time. And you do get to know them. You may get to know their families. You might even become cool. Some of y'all might hang out, do lunch, things like that. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but understand that school is school. Because I have I see a lot of young ladies get mixed up. Most of the people that you go through school with, you don't talk to after you're done. You don't talk to these people after you're done with school. I might talk to maybe two, I've been out of school two weeks. I might talk to maybe two people from school. Now, do I follow a lot of my classmates, previous classmates on social media? Yes, I support that way, but they're not my friends. You know what I'm saying? So like. I'm not saying that you won't make friends in school, but I'm saying like that should not be your focus. Uh, programs are about a year. Get as many hours as you can, um, as fast as you can so you can get done with the program because I'm not gonna lie, after about six months, you're gonna be over it. That first six months, you're on the up and up, you're on, you know, those first two months are like everything. Three, four, five, six, you still be feeling it. Man, coming down that down slope, seven, eight, nine, you be over. By month nine, you're over it. And you still got three more months to go. Like you're over it by month nine. You're ready to get out of school. You're tired of coming. It's, it becomes repetitive. Um, and, and you get irritated. You know what I'm saying? But you have to, you gotta push through that program. Like you have to push through it. And, and it sucks. It sucks, okay? It sucks. It's fun in the beginning. It's cool in the middle 
towards the end, it sucks. And then you get to the end and then you're like excited and you're done, All right? So, yeah, I'm a little stuffy. Um, but yeah, I think that is my first spill on Aveda. Um, how could I say this being politically correct? Every place has its bullshit. My school had small amounts of bullshit. <laughs> but overall, if I had to give it a scale, a, a, a score on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give Aveda a strong 9.5. Okay? I would give Aveda San Antonio a strong 9.5. The 0.5 that they lose is on their bullshit. You know, because I'm going to just keep it funky. A lot of young girls come into cosmetology school right after high school. So you're, they're getting a lot of young, naive, um, just not knowing students. And sometimes they think because they deal with so many young students that, you know, we're children. And uh, it takes that one student sometimes to come through and let them know, listen, I'm not a child. I paid to be here and I kind of I will be treated with respect so they can get lost in the sauce. You know, a lot of the instructors tend to be older, more experienced in the cosmetology field, their parents, and they feel like, you know, they're dealing with students or children. So if you're an older woman like me, a little bit more seasoned in the game, just be prepared to check that you know, or, or let it be known, like, you, you do have to be assertive um, because they 90% of your classmates are gonna be young, younger than you. I was the oldest person in Nevada for a while after uh, Ms. Harris, after Michelle Harris left. Uh, I was the oldest student in Nevada. And uh, I never had a problem. I had a few, you know, little, you know, moments that I had to say hey is you know we got an issue or we good like but um I did see how they talked to and at the other students and I didn't like it and I didn't think it was okay and the young girls just didn't know how to deal with it you know it got to a point where they were scared to deal with some of the instructors or scared to say something to some of the administration and you should never feel like that in a place where you're paying your money okay because it is business and we do pay for our education. If you don't like what you do, then find another job. Um, so yeah, that's my part one spill on Aveda Institute, uh, specifically Aveda Institute, San Antonio, Texas. Um, I give it a 9.5 out of 10. And I think if you're thinking about going and you're in the San Antonio, Texas area, Aveda is it. Aveda is it for sure. It's going to give you, you're going to get your bang for your buck. Uh, you're going to get your money's worth. Um, a team of amazing instructors. And I just want to take this time to thank all of the instructors. Um, you guys are amazing. Okay. And I really did enjoy my time there. I'm sorry that it was cut short. Um, but I wasn't about to pay double for something that my benefits already paid for. I just didn't feel the need to do that. Which brings me to my situation. Y'all, this is a unique situation to be in. But it is a situation nonetheless. Um, I am currently in the process, in the beginning processes, of relocating back to my hometown, which is Washington, D.C. Yes, I will be servicing the Washington, D.C. DMV area soon. Um... I'm home right now on a 30-day hiatus from San Antonio, just trying to get my logistics together, figure out where I'm going to move, how I'm going to do things, um, that transition. So that's what I've been doing home, hence my other vlogs of me traveling home, my DC vlogs. Um, but I haven't taken my practical, okay? I haven't taken my practical for a few reasons. For reciprocity in the District of Columbia, specifically, Maryland, specifically, VA, specifically, right? 
to transfer over reciprocity. So reciprocity is what you call transferring of licensing from state to state. You could do this with barber, esthetician, or cosmetology. So if I go and I take my state board practical in Texas, I pass it. I be, excuse me, I become licensed in Texas. Cool, great, no problem. Way to go. However, DC will not count the reciprocity. Where I will be practicing cosmetology at is in the District of Columbia itself, north, Northwest, Northeast DC to be exact. Um, it doesn't count the reciprocity. In order to transfer reciprocity from another state, you will have to practice cosmetology and be licensed in that state for at least six months, having at least a 1500 hour or equivalent program. Y'all, I did not finish the 1500 hour program. Oh my God. So I didn't finish the program. And even if I even if I did finish the program and I were to get my license in the state of Texas, I won't have six months of activity under my belt in order to transfer my license. So I might have to redo a cosmetology program here in Washington, D.C. Y'all, I'm, I'm not upset about it. And this is, here's why I'm not upset. I don't have to pay for it, okay? Because I still have my VA benefits. So that's cool, okay? That's probably the main reason why I'm not tripping. And when you use your VA, VA benefits, you get paid to go to school. So that's income for me, which is cool, not a problem. I just feel like I wasted a whole year. You know, unfortunately, y'all might may or may not know my situation. I'm going through a divorce. Well, I'm separated from my husband. Um, you can check out why in another video. I'm not going to talk about that now because I'm healing from that, you know. But I'm separated from my husband. And this has caused the transition to me coming back home. So it's like another year of hair. Which is okay because I would be doing it anyway. But it's just like in a, in a student form. I'm... Oh my God, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it. But I have to make it because I, I want to get licensed in D.C. So, that's like, yeah. That's where I'm at. Um, I will be, if if I choose to go this route, which I, I kind of don't think I have a choice. Okay. Um, we're doing Paul Mitchell. We're doing Paul Mitchell. So this is going to be a very unique circumstance. I think I might be one of one to do this, okay, to attend two different cosmetology schools for the same program. I don't think anyone has ever done this. So I'm interested in it. I, I did go into a, the school the other day and I'm super excited, I guess, to learn Paul Mitchell's way versus Aveda's way. Um, I'm excited about it and uh, just you have to do 1500 hours so um, that's just the requirement here it ain't no getting around that so um, and that's okay that's cool but yeah y'all and I'm gonna vlog it I'm gonna vlog my Paul Mitchell experience the same way I did with Aveda so if you have been rocking with me due to the cosmetology vlog you're gonna love what comes next on this channel and this new phase in my life i'm scared i am fearful but god is real and if you've been following me long enough you know that it doesn't matter how you feel god is still and always worthy to be praised amen so um i'm not gonna blabber on i've been blabbering for about 27 minutes now okay leave your comments in the comment section if i didn't if i think of enough things that I did not mention to create a vlog I'm going to do a part two um I hope that I got everything out I hope that I gave you guys a better understanding I am going to do a five things you should know before attending cosmetology school video separately that I did not talk about here because there are about five to seven things you need to know before you start cosmetology school. And I wanted to save that for a separate video. Um, 
but I just wanted to get this content out. So that's why I'm coming from you kind of, you know, before I take a nap and lay down and go to happy hour and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, thank y'all for rocking with me. Um, I'm excited about what's to come. I will keep you guys posted on what I'm doing. I'm still vlogging my DC experience, my transition. I'm gonna vlog that in its entirety. And um, yeah. Touch by Ty Herco, out. Bye.